Every spring and early summer, we get what's called the first wave of worried homeowners and rental tenants who realize something's wrong with their AC system. Sometimes it's a mechanical part like a capacitor or a motor, but other times it's a refrigerant issue. This week we're going to talk about refrigerant leaks, what the laws are and the moral obligations you and your technicians may have when it comes to refilling your HVAC system with refrigerant year after year. As a technician who goes to hundreds of homes every summer in the hot Sacramento Valley, sometimes customers will call into the office and tell us another company told them that they have to get a whole new system because they're not allowed to fix older systems anymore. Other excuses I hear is they don't make R22 anymore so there's no refrigerant to add back into their system. Unsuspecting homeowners will believe these technicians and fall for their unethical tactics. Other homeowners will call Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning where we will offer a free second opinion to come out and verify a leak that supposedly exists and give them proper solutions to remedy the leaky system. Let's talk about the obligations we as decent human beings have to this great planet we live on. The government regulates and monitors our usage and consumption of refrigerant in this country. In other parts of the world, not so much. It's crazy to think of the irresponsibility technicians and other parts of the world have when it comes to just pouring pounds and pounds of damaging refrigerant into the Earth's ozone layer. You see, the refrigerant in our older systems now is R22, which is a mix of chemicals that contains chlorine, which degrades the ozone layer quickly if it were to get out into the open. The systems in our homes hold anywhere from three to 20 pounds of refrigerant. Just two pounds of refrigerant leaking into the atmosphere causes as much environmental damage as a van driving 10,000 miles down the road. The damaging result is global warming and accelerated environmental weather extremes. You know the stories. You've seen it on TV. Al Gore told you this crazy weather is because of an accumulation of damaging practices we have as humans to this giant world. Refrigerant loss from our home HVAC systems don't even have a definite requirement yet as to when we have to perform a repair on the leak. The government right now just says that if the system holds over 50 pounds of refrigerant, then we have to fix the leak. Not only do we have to fix the leak on those systems, but we have to come back and verify that the leak is taken care of on a biannual basis until the EPA requirements for follow-up are satisfied. We as technicians are now responsible for logging any refrigerant coming in and out of any given system, not just commercial and industrial machines, but residential too. When I get out on these calls with low refrigerant suspected, I'll attach my gauges to the air conditioner outside and fire it up. And let's say the system will start, but doesn't sound normal. Maybe like a light clanking noise quickly repeating itself in its own little rhythm. After a few minutes of running, the gauges show me that there is indeed very little refrigerant left in the system. What does this mean? Well, the HVAC system is separated into three lines for your refrigerant to stay in. The evaporator coil at your furnace, the condenser coil on the outside unit, and the copper line set that runs between the two coils. So when the system was installed, these three sections were brazed together by the technician at your house. During the call, and at the very least, a technician should volunteer to visually go around and check all the brazed points in your lines. There are at least two points in the evaporator coil and two others at the condenser coil that the installing technicians braze together to complete your HVAC system's refrigerant lines. The technician should be looking for oil around these connections. Why? Because the refrigerant in the system carries oil with it to lubricate the components inside the system, like the compressor. This means if the furnace and the evaporator coil are up in the attic, the technician does need to get their ladder out, go up there, and actually do this visual check. While they're up there, they should check the P-trap for oil in the condensate lines. A good technician knows that a majority of leaks happen at the evaporator coil or at the condenser coil, and they very rarely happen at the line set that runs in between the two. If the evaporator coil is leaking badly enough, oil will drop down into the evaporator coil drain pan that the water usually goes down into. It it'll then start its way down the condensate drain line until oil starts filling up in the P-trap. These are very easy checks the technician should include on the original diagnosis charge for coming out. If they don't see anything there and they're sure that they have checked all of the easier points of access to the refrigerant lines at the evaporator coil, the tech should then check the outdoor coil looking inside the top of the unit and all around it looking for darker stains of oil. Also, the Schrader cores where the gauge is attached to, 
Sometimes are they too loose or they're not sitting correctly within the valve? If the tech is satisfied that the leaks are not there, then he or she should start an investigation of sorts. Is there any history of leaking with this system? Is a question the technician should ask. The homeowner has some obligation to tell the truth here. If the owner deceives the technician, then we're really not getting anywhere, are we? I can say there have been very few owners that I didn't believe when they told me, no, never had any leaks before, or well, we just moved in here a couple months ago. At this point, right here, a technician should offer a strategy to the homeowner to help determine if it's a leak, and if so, what will we do to try the, to find the hole and repair the system so it doesn't leak anymore? Our technicians at Fox Family ask if there is a history of leaking for this HVAC system because it helps us establish a base point for the rate in which this system is leaking. We just want to know if there has been refrigerant added to the system before, and if so, when. This is a big point as to why I wrote this blog. So, if this is the first time that the system has been topped off to get you cooling again, then we should get you cooling and use this as a starting point to determine if the system is leaking and if so, how much and how often. If the refrigerant was admittedly topped off last year, then I think it is a good time to go ahead and introduce the idea of looking for the leak. This is mentioned wholeheartedly in the best interest of the planet and its survival. We want to avoid being unethical here now, so now that we know the system is being topped off every so often to maintain its cool air. R22 has chlorine and R410 still has massive global warming potential. We need to stop that from getting out to the ozone. If we can find the leak, then we can get the system back to factory specs. When I want to introduce the leak search, I tell the customer, hey, let's get you back cooling today so that your family's comfortable. Then we should go ahead and start the leak search process which includes us going to different parts of the AC system with our electronic sniffer looking for the leak. The majority of the time I can find the leak with this method. That costs X amount and is good for the first hour of searching for the leak. If we can't find the leak after the first hour, we bump it up a level to X amount. This level of leak search includes us adding fluorescent dye to the system so that we can let it circulate in the system for a couple weeks, all while you're staying cool. Then we come back out and look for the dye. If there is indeed a hole somewhere in that copper or aluminum line, the oil and the dye inside the lines will spew out of the hole and splash onto anything around it, like the aluminum fins on the coil or the condensate drain pan and into the P-trap. We'll take the dye kit, which comes with some fancy yellow glasses and a UV flashlight. When we shine the light onto the dye, which has come out of the leak, and we have our yellow glasses on, we can plainly see that the leak is coming from there. A technician shouldn't stop looking though. Just because there's one leak doesn't mean there aren't two or three more holes. If the leak is in the fins of the evaporator coil or condenser coil, we can't get in there to fix the leak without compromising the standards of the manufacturer. It's possible, yes, but the possibility of that repair causing a restriction or other repair if the brazing compound didn't settle properly on the underside of the repair spot. Also, the copper or aluminum is a lot thinner on the coils than the copper line set that runs in between. The reason it is so much thinner is because of heat transfer that happens at the coils. So they need that copper to be thinner. This means when the leak is in the evaporator or the condenser coil, and it's not on a U-bin or other easily accessible spot, we'll recommend you getting another coil from the manufacturer. We'll get it ordered and replaced for you in no time. No matter where the leak is, the money you have paid for the leak search will go towards the cost of the repair. Some of these repairs can be upwards to $2,000 to replace the parts. So it's nice to know that we can find the leak and then we can put that money towards the cost of the repair. As a customer, it's nice to know what to expect during the leak search process. Simply explaining the repair in common terms that aren't too techy for the customer would be appreciated. A leak search is not always needed just because you went out to the house for the first time and filled up some refrigerant. There is a proper way of establishing knowledge and data about this particular unit. Starting at that first time out there and getting the customer cool is the most important thing. Next year, if we had to add refrigerant again, then we should establish a plan for finding that leak. It's our moral obligation as techs and as homeowners to find the leak and repair it. If there's a history of leaking refrigerant from your system, it's on you as homeowners to let us know. I realize it's gonna cost some money to make the repair, but once it's fixed, you won't have to keep paying for the refrigerant that just keeps getting more and more expensive every year. Well, thanks for checking out this blog on leak search recommendations. 
If you're a homeowner and are concerned that what the other technician said doesn't match what I'm saying here, you might want to call a trusted HVAC company in your area that will set you straight and actually give you some options rather than say, oh yeah, you need a new system. <clears throat> Sometimes customers will want to call Unsuspecting homeowners will believe these technicians and fall for their unethi unethical tactics. Unethical tactics. You know the stories. You've seen it on TV. Al Gore, Al Gore told you, Al Gore told you, told you that. <laughs> Al Gore told you this crazy weather is because of an. Al Gore told you this what. So what does this mean? The HVAC system. What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, the HVAC system is separated into, and it's not like on a U-bend or other, or easily other, 